Unit 10 Recording 9 Globalization of Farmland For over a decade, a relatively new situation has evolved when farmland is sold or leased to international investors. In other words, farmland has become an international commodity. Against the backdrop of increasing demand for food, there has been a growing interest by governments, agribusinesses and investment funds in acquiring long-term property rights or leases over large areas of farmland, mostly in developing countries. The phenomenon rose to prominence in the aftermath of the food crisis of 2007 to 2008, when substantial increases in food prices raised farmland value and the option value of securing land for food production. The increased interest in farmland is part of a broader set of developments that are changing the nature of the agricultural sector. Not only have multinational companies and foreign direct investment become more important in promoting sectoral growth, the role of global value chains in expanding food supply has become more prominent. According to the Land Matrix, an online database of large-scale land acquisitions that are verified by non-governmental organisations, more than 1,959 deals were concluded between 2000 and 2021, with a cumulative size of almost 55 million hectares in 85 countries worldwide. This expanse corresponds to an area the size of Ukraine, which is equal to roughly 15% of the remaining global stock of unused and non-forested arable land. Africa, approximately 558 deals, Eastern Europe, 539 deals, Asia, 469 deals, have been the most important target regions, followed by Latin America with nearly 361 deals. Obviously, these continents govern comparatively large areas of unused arable land. Investors targeted countries with weak tenure security for existing land users, supposedly because this would allow investors to obtain land without compensating existing users. Indeed, in many countries in Africa and Asia, land ownership rights are mostly informal, with little possibility for existing users to take legal action if their land holdings are appropriated by the state or powerful investors. With the demand for food increasing because of rising incomes and ballooning populations, Private investors and agribusinesses were buying land to reap substantial profits. Moreover, many governments, such as several Gulf states and China, have acquired vast areas of farmland abroad for offshore food production to reduce their dependency on imports to feed their people. Investments that are motivated by food independence may improve food security in middle and high-income countries at the expense of food security of low-income areas. Food trade and land acquisitions are driven by cross-country differences in technology, land endowments, geography and institutions. Investments are motivated by either profits or food independence. Under the profit motive, investors will be more interested in buying land in countries with good access to world markets because this raises profit potential. In contrast, under the food independence motive, investors are only interested in exporting to their country of origin. They are then discouraged by a high degree of openness to world markets as this increases the degree of competition between different investors. Consistent with the food independence motive, investors prefer to invest in countries that, at least until recently, had weak access to world markets and participated little in global agricultural trade, even after controlling for land endowments, tenure security and a variety of other factors. Hence, large-scale land acquisitions seem to have been directed at isolated, food-insecure countries that are in dire need of investment in the agricultural sector. On the one hand, these acquisitions have the potential to deliver benefits in those countries where it matters the most. They signal that capital, technology and agronomic knowledge in the agricultural sector is flowing from rich investors to poor countries. On the other hand, the clustering of these deals in vulnerable countries can potentially amplify the detrimental effects of a future food crisis. The food independence agenda is real. Acquiring land abroad with the purpose of re-exporting the produce to the investor country may be detrimental to food security of the host country. In addition, investors may buy land for speculative purposes, keeping the land idle until food prices increase, or they may rely intensively on foreign instead of local factors of production. So, the outcome of these deals could be both positive or negative for the host countries. Host country governments can remedy the risks by investing in monitoring capacity to ensure that land is leased to investors who employ workers from the local population, 
promote integration of local businesses into value chains, and co-invest in local public goods and infrastructure. Furthermore, countries may set strict rules for compensation paid to displaced land users. Strict rules make it easier for the state to protect and enforce property rights of displaced land users than under a liability regime. Under liability regimes, especially in the developed world, the subversion of justice by powerful investors through legal skill, bribery, or even physical force against the weak is a serious concern. In recent years, investors' interest in land acquisitions has somewhat waned. However, food prices are bound to increase again in the future. When that happens, the search for available land overseas will in some shape or form intensify again. There continues to be an ample opportunity to increase agricultural productivity in developing countries, especially in the sub-Saharan Africa where yields are 50% below their potential level. To maintain current levels of cereal self-sufficiency by 2050, complete closure of the gap between existing and potential yield across the African continent is required. Many farmers in the developing world are slow to adopt technological innovations, however, and so foreign investments in farmland could be beneficial. Nevertheless, a repeat of the past in which countries tried to secure their food supplies by offshoring production without ensuring adequate food supply in the host countries seems less likely. In this context, it is interesting to note that China appears to have a strategic incentive to make this happen. Since China is very land scarce, it will continue to rely on food imports, even more so now that its citizens are transitioning towards a western style. At the same time, with the world population set to rise from 7.6 billion today to 9.8 billion in 2050, food demand is expected to grow strongly in the rest of the world too. In Africa alone, the population is expected to increase by 1 billion. In this context, Land acquisitions may continue to play a role in the agricultural sector provided they raise food supplies across the board.